Welcome to the Lone Wolf North American Bike Park Review Tour. My name is Andrew. And I'm Drew. This summer we're going to be hitting the road to not only review the trails at bike parks, but give you some of the best information on local spots to eat, lodging, camping, and activities to do off the mountain. So strap in, let's hit the road. Welcome back to another episode of our Bike Park Review Tour. We just wrapped up a few days in Keystone, Colorado and had a great time. We started by checking out the village. It is an awesome village, brand new, tons of shops, places to eat, things to do, and a lot of families wandering around with kids. This is a great village if you have kids to come. They have all kinds of activities with mazes and all kinds of fun stuff to do. Yeah, and after we made our way through the village, we got our waiver signed, geared up, and it was time to hit the slope. We were really excited to check out some of the trails as none of us had been to Keystone, and we'd been hearing a lot of stuff about the trail. So, um, Chili, what were your first impressions once we got out? Yeah, so first impressions, it's a bit of a polarizing mountain. This is a place that's highly technical. Uh, a lot of the trails are kind of older school in style. There's a lot of tight corners, really steep sections, and it's a very rocky, challenging mountain. So if you're a beginner rider, um, this might be a challenging place for you. The range of trails on the mountain are mostly black, actually. Uh, some of the, there are some green trails, but they are a little bit more on the challenging side for green trails. Lots of natural features like roots and rocks. And then the blue trails are the same thing. Lots of natural features like roots and rocks. So this is a technical mountain. It does have flow terrain as well that they've been working on adding recently. Yeah, I, I will say the, the flow terrain wasn't a highlight for our crew. Um, it seemed that the jumps uh, and berms were just not really built. Um, I, I don't know, I, I guess we just couldn't figure out the flow quite right. It felt like if you were coming into the jumps at trail speed, the lips were a little too steep and the jumps were too short. Um, you know, we had to really slow our speeds down to actually like make the jumps feel right um, to where we kind of pop them and get any sort of style. And then there was some kind of awkward corners where you know, the jumps all of a sudden out of a really tight berm where you would lose a lot of speed would be a lot longer than the ones coming out of a straightaway from the ski slope. So um, it, it kind of left our crew a little bit, uh, I guess, unsure as to where we felt on, on the jump trails, but that was all right because we ended up having a lot of fun on the raw techie trails and uh, Mosquito Coast, which was actually, I think, a blue tech. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a little bit of a, a an aggressive blue trail, but it's something that's not overly consequential so if you kind of want to push your limits a little bit and you're in that kind of intermediate zone it'll be a trail that really kind of gets you up to a more comfortable spot in tighter quarters like that was one of the nice things about the trails at keystone is that nothing was really like bulldozed big wide freeways everything was like real tight and small like even some of the beginner trails it kind of gave you a little bit more of an exciting feeling even if the trail wasn't super crazy yeah, and we actually met up with a local guy, Caleb, uh, who works on the bike park crew as well. Uh, they have a crew of four guys that works and maintains the mountain, so it was cool to be able to chat with him, and he was able to show us some of the local lines on the tech trails, which was really fun to follow him around. And we actually had a really good time once we did that. You know, in the beginning, we were kind of trying to find our flow and figure the trails out, and he showed us which ones to connect with which ones, some secret little, like, cut lines and stuff, so that was pretty cool to have him there. Um, you know, Caleb really said, like, this isn't like a flow mountain or like a trail speed mountain it's it's a keystone speed and you know that was really something that uh, kind of stuck with us the rest of the trip you know if you really kind of used your brakes and you felt the flow out a little bit differently the keystone speed was definitely a different speed but um, nevertheless if you can ride there fast I think you could ride anywhere fast yeah. right I mean it's very technical the the dirt you know at least when we were there mid-July was pretty dry it's loose rocky you know insides of corners were a bit sketchy mm -hmm. like It'll definitely make you work and want to have the right tire selection and uh, braking application for sure. Absolutely. So if you're not into the mountain or if you're looking to stuff for stuff to do off the mountain, there is also a ton of things to do uh, in the area. It's a really beautiful area of the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, we actually had a lot of good times at Keystone. Um, we stayed just off site from the mountain, kind of in this big condo complex. There was a public pool for us to use. There's multiple golf courses, horseback riding. Um, there's tons of restaurants. You know, we actually had a really good meal, um, or I really enjoyed the tacos up at the top of the mountain. They've got live music playing. So like, it's a really fun happening city. Um, you're really close to Dillon. Uh, there's a Dillon Reservoir, the Green Mountain Reservoir. We went swimming in both those places. And uh, we actually ventured just outside to the neighboring town of Breckenridge and checked out Woodward West, which I know yep. you were pumped on. 
and the Frisco Bike Park. So yeah, those are both think? really fun. They're actually really close by. So if you are looking to go and ride some foam pit or something at Woodward, I believe it's 45 bucks for the day. Yeah. Uh, the price may change depending on you know camp and stuff, but you can go there and ride the foam pit, which is really fun if you want to dial in some tricks, practice some stuff. Uh, we also went over to Frisco Bike Park, which is a public bike park in Frisco, Colorado. Uh, it has everything from jump lines to dual slalom. Um, that was a blast. It yeah. was a little windy when we were there, but it was really cool to check out the uh, dirt jumps and talk to the local kids and stuff. And they even have a really nice skate park too, if you're into that. So yeah, tons of stuff to do out in the local area. What did you think in the end? And we really struggled with this one, guys. It, it's, you know, it was a tough call trying to wrap up this park and what we really thought of it. So your thoughts? Yeah. I kind of want to pull the whole group into this one, right? There was five of us that it, that all went to Keystone, as and the rest of the parks so far. Um, there's a there's a, a bit of a mixed consensus, I guess, on the trails, the riding um, at Keystone. We love the village. The family friendliness is awesome. It's it's close to Denver. You're close to several other bike parks in the area. So if you're you know making a tour and you're gonna kind of check out several parks in the Rocky Mountain area, it's definitely worth a hit. Um, again, if you're a golfer, great. If you like food, we you know they've got nightlife. There's stuff to do. So like on that side of the spectrum, it ranks high, like one of the highest so far on our trip. Um, the trails, as you said, are a bit polarizing. So um, if you like raw, natural, steep, loose, marbly terrain, you're gonna love it. Um, if you love flowy, natural, like jump lines, like with well-built jumps, it's, you know, probably not gonna be ideal for you. Um, I would say though, my overall takeaway vote for Keystone Bike Park and that Keystone area, um, gosh, I'd probably have to give it about a seven. All right. Yeah, and I, you know, I think uh, what's interesting to point out is like there's tech trails in Whistler, right? Those trails just have a little bit more flow to them than these trails at Keystone. That These trails are challenging and they're kind of slow and twisty and there's big rocks you have to get over and stuff. So this isn't like a fast flowy technical terrain, uh, if that makes sense to have flow in a tech trail, but it, it's more of a challenging kind of cumbersome, like it really pushes your bike skills. So if that's something you're into, then that's awesome. Um, I do think the maintenance in the park could be a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I mean, the crew's yeah. not that big and they have a ton of trails to maintain. So yeah, four, it's just, four guys is yeah, a lot. That's it's a, really a lot hard, of terrain. Especially I mean, with how dry it is too. So And it's 2,000 feet of vert, right? Every yeah. lap is 2,000 feet. So you're getting a lot of drop and to have four guys covering 30 something trails, I think it yeah. is like. It's it, a lot. Yeah. So no fault to them. It's just a lot of trails for them to maintain. So what's your, what's your number out of 10? I, you know what? I think I'm gonna have to go with something like a 6.8 or something. And I, I hate to say that, but I just think that there's parks that uh, offer a little bit better all around riding experience in the park. Mm -hmm. uh, I think also it, it caters a lot to really advanced riders, which is fine. But uh, I think bike parks, you know, need to be inclusive for a lot of people. And like the stuff was pretty technical. And I, I hate to say that because there's some really fun stuff in that park too. Like, yeah. I really enjoyed it, but uh, yeah, I just think like overall flow, some maintenance issues, some issues on the, you know, blue jump trails as well. Like it's tricky, but I mean, we still had a lot of fun in this park. And again, if you're looking for technical riding, it's a really, really great place to go. So yeah, I totally agree. Um, if you're in the area, if you're making a loop, definitely stop by, check Keystone out, uh, especially if you like loose, natural kind of raw terrain. Um, there's plenty of that to be had there bring an extra set of tires, maybe some brake pads, and uh, you'll have a good time. So thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. And uh, we're going to pack up, hit the road, and we'll see you at the next stop, which is Bogus Bays in Idaho.